people generally consider crocodiles to be neither calm nor friendly animals. Nonetheless, this did not deter the man from rescuing a dying crocodile. And later, he was deeply moved by the experience. So please continue watching until the end. Crocodiles are among the deadliest animals in the world. As their attacks are 100 times stronger than those of sharks. And they are quite common. Crocodiles possess immense jaw strength for biting. And they are incredibly fast swimmers. Reaching speeds of up to 35 kilometers per hour. However, what makes them truly deadly is their extraordinary ability to conceal themselves. Crocodiles can swim very slowly and cautiously, getting as close as a few meters to their prey without being noticed, and then swiftly launching an attack. They not only hunt animals but also pose a threat to humans. Their primary characteristics have changed little since the time of the dinosaurs, making them some of the most efficient predators in the natural world. So why did this man decide to save a crocodile and put his own life in danger? Ambos, a 56-year-old man, resides at the mouth of the Borneo River in East Kalimantan, Indonesia and he has spent his entire life in this small river town. He has a deep love for water and refuses to leave the city. The city's livelihood heavily depends on the aquatic life nearby, as people sell them in markets or cook them as food. Therefore, there has never been a shortage of various aquatic creatures here. However, people are not afraid of the animals in the city, instead, they fear the creatures lurking in the murky river. People's lack of fear for these deadly reptiles can largely be attributed to Ambos. Somehow, this man established a friendship with crocodiles. And the crocodiles even seek him out. When they haven't seen him for a day or two. Ambos, in an interview with a local newspaper, said, I treat them like my own children. But how did this incredible friendship begin? It all started over 20 years ago when Ambos was a young man, eager to leave the city and explore himself. He grew up near the water and was no stranger to boating along the river. Typically, he would take a boat to another fishing village, or simply explore a part of the river. He had no fear of the river or the creatures that lived in it. However, despite growing up by the river, he was neither immature nor reckless. As a young boy, his parents had told him many stories about how dangerous the water could be and how people could be carried away by the currents. The stories his parents told most often were about how dangerous crocodiles in the river could be and how they could silently approach without anyone noticing. These stories instilled in Ambos a deep respect and fear of crocodiles and he knew better than to provoke these creatures. But everything changed 26 years ago in 1997. At that time, Ambos was 33 years old, and he encountered a young saltwater crocodile on a river. He was traveling on a boat when he first saw this small reptile. It was about one meter long at the time. Ambos noted that its size indicated it was a juvenile crocodile. As male saltwater crocodiles can grow up to 7 meters long and weigh up to 1,000 kilograms, while females are much smaller, only reaching about 3 meters in length and weighing around 150 kilograms. When Ambos saw the crocodile, he didn't pay much attention to it. He knew they were dangerous and had no intention of approaching a creature that could potentially harm him. Instead, he turned away from the reptile, gazing at the water's surface, excited to be heading home. However, he noticed a crocodile named Riesca closely following the boat, even sticking right by its side. The crocodile was getting closer, and Ambos could now see that it wasn't in the best condition. This crocodile appeared to be on the brink of death. 
as it was extremely emaciated. The young man immediately grew concerned for the little crocodile, and knew he had to take action to ensure its survival. Although he interacted cautiously with this deadly creature, it didn't mean he wished for its demise. As he had no other choice, Ambos enticed the obviously hungry crocodile with some meat. The crocodile wasted no time and lunged at the man. Seizing the food, it remained unclear why and how this crocodile had fallen into such a dire state. But Ambos was determined to do everything in his power to ensure its survival. Ambos spent a considerable amount of time feeding the crocodile, making sure it got food every time it appeared, even if he had to go to work. Whenever he left the village, he would instruct his neighbors to feed Riesca. There was always someone there to care for the poor crocodile. When he had to work in the provincial capital of Samarinda, he convinced his neighbors to continue looking after Riesca. It received regular meals. And even local fishermen would come by to offer it some of their catch. But what happened next will touch your heart. After helping the crocodile recover, Ambos initially thought it would disappear into the river forever. But that wasn't the case. Instead, this crocodile returned to the village time and time again, eagerly seeking out its friend and enjoying the delicious meals. Over time, they forged a very deep bond. Ambos said, I love Riesca very much because I have been taking care of it. Since it was very small. Of course. There is a sense of fear. But my ancestors believed that people could build relationships. With crocodiles and other animals. Even though I love Riesca. I never take it lightly when interacting with it. He made sure to always know Riesca's whereabouts. And carefully avoided getting too close to prevent any sudden attacks. Considering that it was still a wild animal. Ambos also took great care to warn other tourists. And visitors not to take any risks. As he couldn't bear to see anyone get hurt. If you're interested in forming a friendship with a crocodile. Please let me know in the comments. Here. You can also find a very touching story about a dog reuniting with its owner many years later, which is sure to bring tears to your eyes. Many young people often believe that all problems can be solved by force. They reign over people's fear and threaten those who oppose them. Today we are going to talk about three of these guys who formed a gang and went to nearby villages to rob innocent people and scare local girls. No one can stand against them and it only makes the group worse. One day, they drove into a small village and got very drunk. They stopped in the center of the village near the church. Turned on loud music and continued to drink. Terrorizing the locals. Unfortunately, the village is mostly old. So there is no one to stand up to the young. Which gives them the confidence to be loud. The Sunday service at the church was coming to an end. And the streets were starting to fill up with people. The gang yelled at the old woman for leaving the church. Then their eyes fell on a beautiful young girl with her grandmother. They immediately ran to her and invited her to join them for a drink. She tried to politely decline. Then picked up the pace. Trying to stay away from the group. But they didn't accept her refusal. A man grabbed her by the arm and dragged her into their car, before two others lifted her legs to try and get her in. The girl struggled and screamed, but to no avail. Her weakness only drew wild laughter from the men. Just before they pushed the girl into the car, out of nowhere a huge, furry thing lands right on the neck of one of the men. Before he could realize what was happening. He let go of the girl with a cry of pain. The animal then bit the other man's hand, causing him to let go of the girl as well, allowing her to run away. As they rolled on the ground, the animal continued to attack the offender, calling for mercy. Then the girl quietly called the beast, and he approached her obediently, 
sat down at her feet. Ready to attack again at any time. Only now did these people see clearly what had attacked them. It was a huge wild cat. A lynx. They dare not get up. For fear that the lynx will attack them again. They begged the girl to let them get in the car and leave. They promised never to appear here again. The girl motioned them away. Stroked the lynx's head. And went home with her grandmother. The gang never showed up there again. But the question remains where did the lynx come from? Why protect girls? It all started a few years ago when her grandmother placed an ad in the local paper saying that she wanted to adopt a kitten to deal with the mice that had come to her house. The next day, a local hunter was walking in the forest and came across a bobcat kitten who had apparently become separated from its mother and lost its way. He knew the little bobcat couldn't survive alone in the wild. So he decided to bring it home. When he was thinking about where to hide the lynx, he remembered seeing an advertisement in the newspaper. The advertisement said that a woman wanted to buy a kitten. That could catch mice. Why isn't this a kitten that catches mice? The man thought for a while and smiled slyly. When he got to the village, he found the woman and sold the lynx to her. He told her it was a purebred kitten. The old lady had vision problems. Her eyesight was very poor. And she couldn't see clearly that it was a wild animal. So she happily bought it. Time passed and the kitten grew up. When he outgrew the size of an average cat. The woman suspected something was wrong. When her granddaughter visited from the city. She immediately recognized her grandmother's new pet as a wild animal. She convinces her grandmother to send him back to the forest because you never know what a beast can do to a person. But the old woman became so attached to him that she flatly refused to do it. The woman and granddaughter took care of the lynx, and the beast was very close to them. He became completely docile and non-aggressive towards people. Until the day a violent man appeared in their village and threatened the girl. So friends, even wild animals can express their gratitude for being given a good life. Unfortunately, not all of us are able to do this. And sometimes we can learn good deeds from animals. After all, not everyone in our lives gets away with it. We often find happiness in the most unexpected places. When we give up hope, the universe seems to lend a helping hand. And only then can we find true love. Max is a very attractive tall and handsome young man. He held a senior position in a construction company. And showed great potential as a specialist. Girls try to get his attention and want to marry him. But Max falls in love with a girl who is only interested in his money. Max dreams of having a family. But that doesn't interest his beloved. So she leaves him for a richer man. Max then fell into a severe depression and even started drinking heavily. His mother was worried about him. So she asked him to go on a trip with her so he could get some rest. He agrees. And joins her on the train out of town. They went to a small village where Max found a job as a railway worker. His duties included driving along the railroad. And identifying possible breakdowns. Work is dirty but quiet. One can walk along the tracks all day. Breathing in the fresh air and admiring the beauty of the forest. During one such walk. Max spotted a wounded wolf cub. He took him home to take care of him. The little wolf cub grew up and became a beautiful big wolf. Now Max is not so boring because his faithful friend is always with him. The wolf is completely tamed. He is not afraid of people. So he is allowed to work with him. During one of his tours. Max and his wolf hear a loud horn in the distance. Indicating an approaching train. Usually when this happened. Max would stay away from the railroad. And the wolf would run into the bushes to avoid the loud noise. But this time. 
The wolf behaved strangely. He dashed along the tracks. Directly toward the oncoming train. Max ran after him. Yelling at him to go the other way. But then he saw the wolf pulling something off its track. As he approached. He was shocked by what he saw. It was an unconscious girl. Max rushed at her and pulled her away from the tracks. She lay lifeless on the ground. The wolf licking her face and hands. Her pulse was very weak. But she was alive. Max picked her up and took her to his warehouse as fast as he could. There. She received medical attention before she regained consciousness. A few days later. The girl woke up and told her frustrating story. It turned out she had grown up in an orphanage, where she trained as a hairdresser. Then got a job in a small beauty salon and rented a room in a hotel. There. She fell in love with one of her clients. He makes her feel like Cinderella. But the fairy tale ends quickly when she finds out she's pregnant. She was very happy that day. She is going to meet her beloved and tell him the good news. But he didn't feel the same way. He told her to get rid of the child. He never wanted to see her again. The girl couldn't believe her ears. She didn't want to lose the fruit of their love. So she went to the forest and left herself there. She wandered the forest for a long time. When she realized she was completely lost. It was dark when she reached the railway. She decides to follow these trails, hoping they will lead her to civilization. But then she faints from loss of strength. If it weren't for Max and his wolf, she would have been run over by a train and the story would have ended tragically. But miracles do happen. For the first time since his depression, Max became interested in another girl. Soon he married her. She had a daughter. He adopted her. And they had a son. And then a daughter. They decided to live in that village. Because they didn't want to lose their happiness in the hustle. And bustle of the city.